All right, everyone. We have episode 16, lucky number 16, of the Bunker to Bunker podcast. Um, I guess at this point, you either a hit on 16 or uh, or stay. I hope you guys stay listening to our content. But yeah, we're back with a more fun Ryder Cup uh, episode. We have a lot of fun things planned, a lot of hypotheticals, a lot of just speculation uh, that may or may not come true next week, but we thought we would kind of do some fun competitions to track during the week. Uh, so I will ask you, Ethan, what is your favorite Ryder Cup moment not from Whistling Straits? So mostly on watch on TV. I want, let's say, let's go back to maybe 2014. Let's not go before that. Um, considering I don't really remember the demise at Medina in the fall. So since 2014, what's your favorite Rock Cup moment? Um, not from when we were there. Well, I'll start with, um, I agree with you. You should always stay on 16. You don't hit on 16. It's a weird thing that I have when playing blackjack. So that, that's a, it's a good lesson for everyone out there. Go against the book and stay on 16. So, mm-hmm. um, I think the easy layup, and it has to be said, would have been Patrick Reed and um, Rory. Uh, yeah, sorry, and Rory's moment at uh, at Hazeltine. Um, probably the best match. I don't want to say ever, but up there in terms of the fan engagement, um, the quality was very good. Uh, so that that would probably be be the number one moment since that time. Yeah. That's definitely number one on my list. I was, I think I'm going to do like a list of like favorite fun moments from uh-huh. like the Ryder Cup since 2014 and kind of post like the clips on Twitter just to get the juices flowing for the Ryder Cup. Yeah, that was my number one. Another one uh, that I liked was, I don't forget what year it was, but it was basically Phil and Sergio duel. Like I forget what number they shot together, but it was just crazy. Um, what they shot together, um, both deserved the win, but Sergio outdueled Phil. Um, I believe he be, may be him on like a part three or something. But uh-huh. so, uh, yeah, those are two. Obviously, Reed and Rory. That's why I, I, was, I actually watched that clip and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll ask you that question. So, um, you got some fun things to go through. Um, I kind of want to give just quickly. My top 10 power rankings of the players. I'm going to post, uh, like, the top 24 in a little, like, tiers and then kind of give, like, quick analysis on Twitter. But with the time that we have, I thought I would kind of give our top 10. Um, you can comment on what you think after, you know, any changes you would make. But I'll go de- I'll go from 10 to 1 quickly. Uh, I kind of have 10A and 10B as Spieth and JT. I don't really know who to leave off in the top 10, so I'll give them both because they're both paired uh, together. Uh, obviously, the Rock Cup record speaks for themselves, uh, so that's why they're here. If I went on just recent form, they would probably be lower, but with their record and vibes, more importantly, with this uh, tiers, I have them as 10A and 10B. Mm. I have 9 as Khan Morikawa. Um, elite iron player. Uh, he got the he won he got the winning point in Whistling Straits. So hopefully he can ride that momentum. Uh, eight. I have Kepka. You know he's I guess the veteran with Spieth and Fowler as pro- uh, probably the most Ryder Cup appearances. Um, I think he's really important this week, especially with his skill set, kind of his major pedigree. Um, so you know I think the team will really have to lean on him to get some points. Mm. Seven, the first European, Tommy Fleetwood. You know, he's famous for the 5-0 and or 4-0 and with Francisco Molinari. Um, I mean, data-wise, he's probably playing the best golf of his career. Uh, I think the team was gonna, really going to have to lean on him. Um, and he you know, he could he is kind of someone that's sneaky to play all five matches, uh, depending on what Luke Donald wants to do. Um, and there were six and five of Cantlay and Xander. Um, you know, Neither of them have won this year. However, again, these two are a lethal pairing, especially in the alt shot for some um, matches. So I think those are two guys that are important that I'll get into later. Um, four, I have Hovland. 
probably the hottest player on tour, probably the best player on tour right now in form. You know, he finished winning the BMW and tour championship, which helped me cash some money. Um, hasn't won the Ryder Cup point yet, so looking for him to do that soon. Mm-hmm. Three, Scheffler. Uh, I don't really have to say anything besides that he's going to have to putt. <laughs> That's why he's number three. Uh, two is Rom. Um, you know, he's the Masters champion, probably the player of the year. Um, he is four and three and one, I believe, in Ryder Cups. Uh, and he, you know, is going to have to play all five and he's going to win some matches for them. And I have him over Scheffler just because I think of his experience in Ryder Cups and has a better putter. And then, probably no surprise, Rory is my number one. Uh, you know, 12, 12, and 3 in Ryder Cups. He cares about this as much as anyone out there. You know, there's not really much to say other than that. I can go on and on, but we have, you know, time constraints. So, Rory's my number one golfer. So, those are my top 10. I believe there's probably no surprises. Maybe the order would flip. Uh, any initial reaction to the, uh, you know, the official Ryder Cup rankings um, of the tournament. No, the uh, the official Ryder Cup rankings are pretty good on my part. There's nothing that really like sticks out there. Um, yeah, it's 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 tough because you know we're only a little bit removed from some like uh, obviously Rory um, is better uh, than Scotty Scheffler, but we're not that far removed from Scotty winning everything in the world every single week. Yeah. Um, and kind of seeing that there's one facet of his game that is really going to make him struggle, which has been pretty pronounced in putting. Um, but yeah, I mean that as as you said, that pairing of uh, Cantley and Xander is is lethal together. You know, same with your your Spieth and your Thomas. But I think that Xander and Cantley uh, just co- are more uh, cohesive um, together. But yeah, pretty pretty good power rankings. Uh, for my part, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of weird doing them because it's like, what do you kind of take into account? Because, mm-hmm. you know, I I kind of went on it based on like if I had to draft like a Ryder Cup team, like these are the players I pick. Like, you know, I guess you know people will argue well, Ludwig is playing better than JT, but like if you had a draft, you're not really dra- you're not drafting mm-hmm. Ludwig over JT. Yeah. Um, so I guess if that's the case, maybe JT would be like, maybe like seven, maybe you'd probably see him over Kepka maybe, or, mm-hmm. or Kawa, but those are kind of my rankings. I'll give like, you know, a little Twitter thread, maybe probably like next week on Monday to kind of get the juices flowing on, on golf Twitter. So that was mm-hmm. kind of a little fun thing I made last night. Um, yeah. so let's get in more. So basically some of them are, it'll be a friendly competition, but, uh, let's go through, First, some um, X factors, sleepers, fades. Before we get into our uh, being the captain of of the Ryder Cup team, as uh, I guess we're proud to you know finally make it there, as some mm-hmm. can't say um, yeah in life. So let's quickly go through who's your X factor, uh, a guy that you know has to play well, you know, a guy that you know maybe he's a little bit sneaky, but a guy that if they if he doesn't score points, like there could be a chance that the other team doesn't lose. So how about you give me the European X Factor quickly? I had my USA X Factor up and ready. You're gonna hit me with the European. Uh, um, yeah. uh, let me think for a second. You know what? I'm taking USA. I'm taking USA because I I had it up and I had my reasonings behind. So we're All gonna right, continue. We'll USA. To... All right, um, Ethan's USA X Factor. Go. Uh, USA X Factor, uh, in my mind, is pretty clearly uh, Justin Thomas. I think that the way that he plays during the Ryder Cup could definitely set the tone for the play of others. I'm not saying there's massive amounts of pressure on Justin necessarily, but with all the outside controversy coming in about, oh, you know, Keegan should have been chosen or this person or that person. I think that for cohesion and great team chemistry, we're going to need to see something from him. Um, so I think if he goes out there, you know, Friday at some point puts that point on the board, I think not only is that great momentum for him, but I think it's great momentum for the team to see their potential. I don't want to say weakest link, but maybe strangest link, um, you know, playing well. So I think he's kind of like 
the hype man, the motivator. I think he has great potential to make the team excel, um, but equal potential to kind of send the team in the opposite direction. Yeah, I mean, very creative answer. Um, I'll go with my X Factor. Uh, yeah, I mean, JT. I actually think JT is just, I, I think JT is going to show up. So I, I didn't go that direction, but I, I'm saying Kepka. Um, you know, he's, you know, also he won a major this year, came in second, you know, in the Masters, won the PGA. I think with his experience, I think honestly, I think they really haven't had to lean on him in any Ryder Cup. But I think especially, especially this one with, I guess, if you want to say like JT and Spieth are in form, and if you can really only count on Xander and Cantlay, like I think Kepka is someone that I think is going to have to maybe play with a rookie like a Clark, uh, if you go by like the Hat Theory, or probably Colin. You know, depending on what you want to deal with the pairings is I think he's going to really, I think we're going to have to lean on him that we haven't ever before. And I think if, if he shows up, I think we have a good chance mm-hmm. to, uh, to get the cup. So I'll go my European X factor. I guess this isn't really that out of the box. Mine's Victor Hovland hasn't won a point at the Ryder cup. He's the third ranked player on the European team per uh-huh. um, the bunker to bunker official Ryder cup rankings. So I think if he really doesn't show up, there could be more pressure on Rory and Rom to perform. And I think, you know, if he can't get a point or, you know, I think he has to get at least two points, um, probably three if you count singles too, um, for really to help the European squad who are very top heavy. Yeah, I, uh, I'll build off that. I don't want to say mine's like mundane or not as creative, but I think that the X factor for the Europeans will be Rory McIlroy. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is it's kind of like twofold my answers to both of these where it's all about like pressure on a specific player that I think will either inflate or deflate a team. And I think there's a lot of silent pressure on Rory to perform overly well this week. Uh, and I think that you know, if he goes out there and plays very well, I think that that'll be an easy, um, you know, transition to the other team to follow his lead. So not necessarily someone who like, oh, you need to lean on Rory to win or anything like that. Cause that's, that's blatantly obvious. You're going to need Rory to play well to win. But I think with all the silent pressure and how hard he took uh, the loss in 2021, I think that he is definitely an X factor for team Europe. Yeah. Uh, sleepers for each side. Uh, I'll start quickly. I'll go with Brian Harmon for USA. Um, the mantra of match play that you want to get the ball in in the hole first, and I think Harmon's, Harmon's the best putter um, strokes, strokes gained wise in the last like 36 rounds, probably even more than that. So with someone who is very accurate off the tee, doesn't hit it far, but you know he hits greens. And if he makes putts, I think he's very lethal. And I, I, I think that's someone that if you're a, a European, I think he's kind of like annoying to play against. I think he's, you know, tiny, isn't this like built guy kind of, he wags his, you know, club and stuff. I think he has that like quirkiness to him that I think um, will kind of maybe piss off some of like the rider covers. Uh, and then uh, for Europe, I have Sepp Straka. Nothing based on his play. I just think that this guy is just going to go 3-0 and make every putt. I've been saying this for months since he won the John Deere coming back. I just feel like this guy is going to be maybe paired with like John Rahm or someone big and just make putts. That's mm-hmm. that's all I got for, for Seth Straka. Yeah. Um, so the European sleeper, I think, would be Bobby Mack or Robert McIntyre, uh, former winner of the Italian o- Open uh, at Marco uh, Simone. Um he beat, I believe it was Fitzpatrick in a playoff. Um, Ryder Cup rookie, so that is a little bit um, difficult to overcome. But I think that given the course history and given you know, even his recent form um, as well, I think he could easily go out and have a great week uh, for Team Europe. And then for Team USA, I think a sleeper, not like a like – a, I mean, he's a household name in Max Homa. Um, again, another a, a debutant, a rookie, however you want to say it. 
uh, does have a 4-0 record in the 2022 President's Cup. So showed up well last year, uh, coming off a tied seventh at in Napa Valley. Um, I think that this is a good moment for him to finally show that like the pressures of bigger tournaments don't get to him, whereas we've seen him kind of disappear in majors. And I think that it's a great time for him to kind of bust out of that shell of only being good at like these, you know, PGA tour level events, no majors, no, you know, Ryder cup or anything like that. So showed up well at the president's cup. I think that form will continue. Yeah. I also think he cares a lot. Mm-hmm. Like I could see him being someone that like, uh, like Thursday night you're there on the property. He's like hitting balls after the ceremony or something. Like I, I think he actually mm-hmm. cares. Um, and you saw his kind of energy at the President's Cup, making that putt famously. So I think, you know, I think right his momentum, which it looks like maybe, you know, according to the hat theory, he might be playing with, with Brian Harmon. So uh-huh. it looks like maybe our, both of our sleepers could be paired together and kind of get some points, which would be pretty cool for us. Uh, who is your fade? I'll, I'll just ask you, you're, you're not, I don't like to use the word fade since like we're not really betting, but like who's the guy that you think will underperform on the United States side, and I'll give a European just for time. Uh, I kind of don't think Sam Burns will play well. Uh, I just that was don't. mine too. Yeah, so. I just don't. I mean, there's a plethora of reasons. I just don't think that everything is lining up for him to be successful. And obviously, someone on this team of twelve needs to be, you know, in twelfth place. And I just don't love the course setup for him. Recent form isn't all the way there. Uh, so I, I, I think that if you had to choose one person, that would probably be mine. Yeah. I also think he has the pressure of like, I think he, I don't know, hopefully he hasn't given himself pressure that he was the guy over Keegan and Keegan gets all this, you know, hating on like the Ryder cup and stuff. Um, I just, you know, I guess he carried Scheffler last year. I, I, I can see them both those two playing just like, I can see Burns just playing in, in like all shot and not really playing four ball. I don't see him playing like three times. So um, mine is, Fitz, is Matt Fitzpatrick for the Europeans. This is kind of more of a data answer is I went on rickrungood.com um, and he has like a distribution of like how, like what percentage of um, rounds a player will exceed a certain amount of like strokes gained. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. And for number four, for so he percentage wise short game total four plus and five plus Fitzpatrick is dead last and Burns is second to last so they don't really so neither of Burns and Fitzpatrick have the upside um that you really want to see in the Ryder Cup so those are reasons why I gave those two fades um or you know who I think will underperform so let's now go into the highly anticipated um bunker to bunker pairings. Um, I actually was going back and forth all night with mine. Um, I don't really like one of mine, but we're going to go with it. So, um, I'm going to act like Luke Donald and the European side, even though I'm wearing my Ryder Cup hat, USA, as, and Ethan will be Zach Johnson, as you can tell, obviously, with the shirt in USA. Uh, so, traditionally, the Europe's... Uh, pick four ball to go first. We usually do four stones when we're on our home soil. So let's act like the history tells us, and we're going to go with four ball. Uh, I don't know who goes first. Does do you know? I think the home team goes first. I believe so. I that does remember. Right. Cause, so yeah. we'll, just, we'll just roll with that. So four ball, yeah. for people who don't know or don't remember, four ball is two man best ball. So they all tee off. They all, so if, you know, JT gets a four, Spieth gets a three, they take a three. You know, if Rom and Hovland make, you know, a three, like two threes, it's just a three. So um, they would push on that. So I'm going to send out uh, first, in our first pairing of the 2023 Ryder Cup, I'm sending out Rory McIlroy and Victor Hovland. That is a way to... There's a way to go off with the bang. I like that. Um, I will respond with, I'll, I'll, I'll preface, I'm not following your hat theory at all. I'm just going with the pairings that make the most sense on paper. So maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. But I will respond with a pairing of Scotty Scheffler and Colin Morikawa. 
Damn, that's a bad look for the half fairy. Um, I know all the <laughs> I half know. out there. <laughs> yeah, they support it. They support the half fairy. Um, so well, let's just go through all of them, and then we'll kind of do instant reactions after. So you would be next. So next, I would like to throw out uh, Xander Shoffley and Patrick Cantlay. Boo, boo, Cantlay. Uh, I will go with the. I'll go with the Englishmen. I'll go with Tommy Ladd, Tommy Fleetwood, and Matt Fitzpatrick. That's a really fun pair right there. That's a great match. Yeah. So when I was at the Tour Championship, it was Hat and Fleetwood and Fitzpatrick played together. Um, uh-huh. Fleetwood and Hovland have played together at Whistling Straits, but with four ball, I want to intimidate Captain Zach Johnson early on and just give out Rory and Hovland, who were paired together at the BMW PJ Championship. So, and they have some other side quests. So, um, I'll go next. I am just going to punt on this one. I'll put out Nikolai, Ho- Nikolai Hoygaard and Bobby Mack. That is the definition of like you're punting on uh, on fourth and one in the opponent's thirty yard line just because you don't you can't figure it out. Uh, it's like Dave Portnoy. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll respond with hopefully the dark horse pairing that if all works well things could go well. Not if all works well if they play well things could go well with Spieth and Thomas, uh, Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas. I think that is a really good matchup for them to take advantage of. I think they'd be moderately probably to heavily favored in that so hopefully that can start off their Ryder cup with uh hopefully an easy an easy win in that that third that's, match yeah that's bold i mean for a united states fan i would love that although hoygaard and bobby Mack, two rookies beat them it's a bad look um it's a it's a it's i don't want to say it's a lose lose but it's like if they lose you're screwed if they win you're okay so i guess i don't know win lose whatever all right, um, you're up. fourth fourth matchup I will throw out um I think that Brooks and Ricky Fowler could be a really fun pairing. Um so I will Hat throw theory. those out. Hat, Hat there theory. You there you go. <laughs> okay. Um I'll finish that pairing with I'll go John Rahm and Hatton. They play together once. They got a tied point at within straights. I think both of their energy um will be out there trying to find Rahm a natural pairing in four ball, but I think I think the Europeans have to just go try to go heavy out the uh-huh. gate, um, especially with Hoy Garden and Bobby Mack out there, you know. Really got to get them going strong. But, yeah, I, I think <coughs> I think having Rory and Hovland start and having to have Rahm anchor uh, uh-huh. is something that I kind of thought about with the order because, like, for, like, the Ryder Cup, you, you have to submit your order first in the President's Cup. Uh-huh. You can go back and forth. Like one team goes out, and then you can like switch on what you would like actually think, uh, which I think is pretty cool for like, the Ryder Cup to do it blindly. Uh, mm-hmm. So, um, any, I guess we'll let's just do four sums quickly, and then we'll go to like reactions. Yeah. Um, so, should I go first for four some? I don't. I'll yeah. just go first. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, for four sums, I'll go with. The Irish pairing of Rory McIlroy and Shane Lowry as foursomes. They are friends off the course, and I think for for foursomes, Europe is not traditionally good at uh, foursomes. So I think with this more chemistry friend pairing, I, I, I'm going to play it safe with Rory and Shane Lowry. I think I'll, I'll hit you right over the head with uh, Xander Schauffele and Patrick Cantlay. And nice. we're going with with the uh, the pairings so of the friends, obviously friends off the course. They are lethal together, whether it be alternate shot or just playing together. Um, yep. Four sums, four ball, whatnot. Uh, I think that's a pretty electric first match. In all honesty. Yeah. That's um, your next one. So the second match would be the two two debutants or de, debut debutants. Uh, Wyndham Clark and Max Homa. I think that is a a, a pretty fun pairing um, between those two. That's it's I guess against the half again. I know, I know. Mm. Okay, I'll give out two Englishmen. I'll go out Justin Rose and Tommy Ladd. Um, you know, Rose has to play 
and I think I'd rather have him play foursomes than other than the other rookies. And I think Fleetwood is kind of someone that they're going to anchor on, so I think he starts out playing two matches. So um, give me Fleetwood and Rose with experience in foursomes, and then I will uh, combat and give me John Rahm and Sepp Straka. I think Straka, at least with his experience on tour, um, I think you know with his you know. What I think he's gonna make putts. I think he mm-hmm. maybe could feed off Ron's energy. This is one I think Ron's gonna have to carry, and I think that may I don't know as my strategy with four ball and four sums. I'm like four sums do a big uh, you know big top player with a medium player, and then for the four ball just try maybe try to stack. So give me Ron and Straka against um, whatever dweebs you're throwing at me. Well, the dweebs would be uh, Scotty Scheffler and Jordan Spieth. It's kind of breaking up that that Spieth pairing with Thomas, but I think you're kind of throwing in players who are opposite of each other in a sense, but that could gel well. You're looking at Scotty who can't putt for his life and Jordan who can really only putt for his life. So I think those are, I guess, you know, was it two, a negative and a positive equal each other? So I think that's that's worth a shot to throw that out there to counter um uh Rom and Straka and then the fourth and final pairing that I would send out would be Brian Harmon and Sam Burns. I don't love this pairing at all. Oh. but yeah, I I don't give me I, a, I just give me a win right now. Oh I know, God. but here's the thing, right? I don't I would rather rest some players like, you know, Thomas or or Brooks or Ricky for Saturday and Sunday and then just kind of punt yeah. on on a Friday afternoon. Yeah. Hope and just yeah. hope that that can gel, and that's coming with Burns, who I think is not going to play well. So that might be like his only match until Sunday. So it's funny that you put Burns and Harmon together because I think I'm putting out two opposite guys, like two different skill sets. Give me Victor Hovland and Ludwig Aberg, two guys just mash the ball together. Both the young guys. I think this I like maybe that. could be a potential future Ryder Cup. You know, they could turn into the next Spieth and Thomas, potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so give me those two to round it out. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. I, I, I don't know why I took this so seriously. I was like, I don't know what to do with, like, Hoy Garden and Bobby <laughs> Mack. I was like, I'm trying to punt on this. But, uh, obviously, I do like your – I like some of your parents. You know, you're kind of against the hat theory on some – but I do think the Scheffler Spieth is very interesting because I think, depending on like how Spieth and Thomas play together, I think JT mm-hmm. could just you know if he's not playing, if, you know if they lose like five and four to like Fleetwood and someone, or may or you know or maybe they lose to Hoy Garden Bobby Mack five to four, that they like rest Thomas if he's if he's the one that's not playing well and like if they need to get Scotty on track, you know put him with Spieth who they you know are both in Texas who probably play a lot outside, you know tour so i think that's honestly a very sneaky pairing that i think ho- hopefully it doesn't happen because that would probably mean that maybe like jt and, and spieth don't really mesh well but um i i really like that one out of all of them yeah um any comments on my parents yeah. before we go into another hypothetical uh your punt was the definition of a punt but also i punted as well with Harmon and burns but i am a uh, I really do like Rory and Hovland to theoretically start out in the first match. I think that is, you know, just kind of throwing two of your big guns out there and kind of just starting off the the Ryder Cup with the bang. So I really like that pairing as well. Uh, I think the countrymen of Fleetwood and Fitzpatrick could gel well. And I also do subtly like the Hovland and uh, Aberg pairing. I think that, you know, Hovland's not necessarily as young anymore, but as you said, these are two guys who do hit the ball a mile, who are playing very well recently. I think that could be a pretty sneaky, successful pairing between those two. I think, especially with the pairings of McElroy, Hovland, and Aberg at the BMW PGA Championship, I think those three are kind of their own pod, honestly. I think at some, I don't know, like, I guess maybe Aber, I, I'm not really familiar with Aberg's game besides that he just mashes the ball off the tee, but I can see those three kind of coinciding. I think Rory hasn't really had a partner. Um, I forget who, I think it was 
I think Rick Rungood said it in his video yesterday, and he said that I think he's I think Maurice played like twenty four matches, Ryder Cup mat like team matches, not singles. And he and all of his pairings are not on this team. All of the guys he's been paired with are not on this team besides Shane Lowry, and he played once with them. So mm-hmm. he hasn't really had any pairing. So I think I feel like he's going to want to just be like, just stick me with Hovland or you know give me Aberg. I'll try to carry him. So we'll see how that goes. But quick hypothetical: give me one fun pairing you would like to see on Sunday. You know, don't don't give me JT and Rory. That's kind of an obvious one, no. but give me a little fun pairing. And this is fun purely because uh, <clears throat> these two players I'm about to say stink. I, one stinks more than the other at this specific skill. I think it'd be really fun to see Hovland versus Scheffler. Um, talking about two of the best iron players in the world, obviously Morikawa is up there as well. And that's a that's a layup, you know, a, a Hovland-Morikawa pairing. But I think it'd be really cool to throw someone like Scotty out there who's terrible at putting and Vic who can be terrible at putting. I mean, they're two styles who line up pretty well outside of um, those two issues um, with their game. But I think that could be really, really fun. So um, in the last 36 rounds, where do you think Hovland ranks putting? Sure, game putting in the last 36 rounds. It's probably up there pretty high, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's. But he's, he's a perennial the, bad putter. He's a perennial bad putter. Maybe he's, he's fourth for the better. Shuffler is last, and then JT. So the 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 bottom four is Spieth, Morikawa, Thomas Shuffler. So it doesn't look, look good Spieth for us. Spieth is the bottom uh, four. Yeah, well, that's just last thirty six. I mean, that's last that's last thirty six yeah. rounds. That's not taking in anything else. Um, my fun pairing. Um, I'll, my one fun pairing, I'll, I would say Homa and Hatton. Uh, I think they both have high energy. I feel yeah. like they both could go like back and forth with energy. I, I put one for you, cause you don't like Cantlay. But give me Cantlay versus any. Give me Cantlay versus Hoygaard, Bobby Mack, or Straka, and lose. Cause that'll be funny. Um, <laughs> I so, would enjoy that. <laughs> so yeah, I'll give you that one. So okay, let's go go. Oh, all right, so we'll go through some fun props. So a little. Uh-huh. Competition, not. I mean, it's kind of hard because like you're picking him like against what one guy out of twelve. So um, we'll go through top score for each country, top rookie score, and then we'll do day one winner and day two winner um, mm-hmm. for fun. And then we'll do the winning score, the winner, and like, the winning point after. So uh, do you want to start out with top USA score? Yes. Um. I really do think that um Xander Shoffley could could really excel um in this Ryder Cup. I think that his consistency, you know, with his iron play, with his driving, with his putting, with basically everything is something that, you know, could really lead him to I don't want to say playing all five uh matches, but probably four. I think that he could go out there and win all of his matches. I'm a firm believer in I think the pairing between him and Cantlay is probably the most successful on Team USA. Obviously, Spieth and Thomas is is a very, very close second. But I think that Xander would be the top USA point scorer. Uh, that was mine. Um, okay. I will go with... Uh, so, yeah, I agree. I will go with... Give me Spieth. I feel like everyone's hating on him. I think... There is a scenario, as you said, that I think he plays better than JT, and JT has to sit, and then he might uh-huh. play with Fowler or Scheffler. So I'm, I'm going to have fun with it, and I'll do Spieth. For Europe, I have Fleetwood. He has one of the better match play records. He's playing the best golf of his career, um, I believe. And I think if he gets hot, he will play all five matches and could go like 4-1 and one or something um, and be the top European scorer, so that's mine. Um, yeah. Who's yours? Um, <coughs> I think that uh, Rory will probably be the, the top scorer. I know that's a, a rather boring pick, but yeah. as I said, you know, he is someone who deeply cares about this event and was moderately dejected after losing in 2021. I think that whereas there is a lot of silent pressure on him to exceed, 
I think that there's also equal opportunity for him to Mm -hmm. um, succeed rather easily and well. So I think Rory would be the top uh, point scorer for top European rookie. I'm kind of between two, and I'll just kind of choose one, and I'm Uh, guessing you'll probably take the other. I just said top rookie, not just – do you want to do each side? Oh, well, sure. (laughs) <laughs> um, my top European rookie, uh, I think sneakily could be Sepp Straka. I think everyone, uh, would be running to say, uh, Ludwig Eiberg, but I think that, as you said, I, I do believe that Sepp could go out there and make every single putt and like go like three and oh, and like call it a day. So I think the top rookie could be, uh, or should be Sepp Straka. So we're doing top, just top rookie. Sure. Um, give me, I was going to do a bird, so I think he'll get paired with Rory and Hovland and play well. Um, but give me Max Homa. I, I, as I said before, I think he just cares about this tournament more than others. Um, Mm -hmm. so give me Max Homa to, uh, you know, hopefully have some fist pumps on, uh, on hopefully like the 15th, 16th green. Um, hopefully not on the last two holes, but um, uh, give me, just give me one bold prediction. One bold prediction. Uh, I think that Jordan Spieth will outplay Justin Thomas and that pairing gets broken up. Yeah, my, my, I'll go my first bold prediction. I think Hovland and Aber go 2-0 and and become the future European Rack Cup pairing, um, and will be the next, like, Spieth and Thomas or Canley and Xander, I just think. Both of them are young. They have very similar skill sets. And I think that Aberg is something you're going to have to unleash. I think they're going to have to lean on him probably over others. And I think that they're going to have to either put him with Rory or, or Hovland. And I think I think the better answer is playing them with, Ho- you know, with Hovland and seeing what the future holds. And I think win or lose, I think they're going to play well. And I think that they're going to be kind of the talked about and maybe form, like, a rival with either one of our top pairings. Uh, mm-hmm. So, um, quickly go through who is your day one winner and day two winner, team winner? So, I think uh, day one would be the U.S. and day two would be Europe. I think the U.S. comes out, starts with the bang, kind of similar to obviously the U.S. dominated in 2021, but I think the U.S. goes out, makes a little bit of a statement. I think uh, Team Europe. Uh, bounces back with day two, and I think, I don't know, maybe the U.S. is going into singles with maybe a two-point lead. I, I don't. I'd say probably around there. I think it. I think obviously it'll be obviously it's always decided on Sunday, but I think this one will be rather, rather tight. So I'd say day one USA, yeah. day two Europe, um, and USA I, probably going I, into Sunday with like a two-point. Yeah, I. That's what I had. Um, so I agree on that. Um, give me who is a player or two. I guess it's also X factor, but I think it's more that if these guys like if, if this person or player or parent don't play well, like they don't have any chance. Give me a, on either side. Um, I don't know if like, they don't have any any chance, but I think it would be a little bit of a gut punch if Spieth and Thomas don't work out well together. Because that is yeah. like the de facto, out you know, Ryder Cup pairing that you know should work well. And I, I, I said it was a bold prediction that it doesn't work well, and that's why it's a bold prediction because I think it will work well. But mm-hmm. I think like the gut punch would be if that doesn't work out and that has to get split up. Yeah, mine is. I think I've been saying that I. It's not really a bold take, but I think if Kent Lane's Aaron don't play well, I don't think they have a chance. I think that yeah. you know, I, I think. The flaws of JT and Spieth, yes, they're a good pairing together, but they have flaws that I wouldn't be surprised if they don't play well. <laughs> but if Xander and Cameron don't play well, and the other team is like, that's like, you know, they're best friends. They, you know, kind of act the same. They haven't lost in four foursomes ever. You know, if they lose in foursomes or something, I think it's just a defeating or a defeating yeah. um, thing that happens. So I think those two, if they do not play well, then I don't think we have a chance. Um mm-hmm. So let's go with okay. Let's go with who wins in the final score. So who wins final score and winning point 
Um, it has to add up to 28. I'll give mine first. I think yeah. I had the Europeans on to win. However, that's just not fun. So, sorry, Luke Donald. I'm going back to enemy lines uh, in USA. I'll go USA wins 15-13. We haven't had a close Ryder Cup since 2012 when we choked at Medina. So, I think that I think this is going to step up to be a close one. I think both teams have flaws. I don't think one team's better than the other one, especially in Europe. And I think this team has what it takes to end the 30-year drought. And my winning point is little Brian Harmon. <laughs> little Brian Harmon. Um, yes. My, uh, I, I do think the USA wins as well. I think it's going to be a lot closer than 15-13. I actually think it'll be... 14 and a half to 13 and a half. I think it'll be razor thin. I think that, um, I mean, the U S were previously hovering right around minus 200 to lift the trophy like earlier on in the year. I'm talking about like, you know, January, February ish. And that line is, uh, shortened to minus 150 now. So it's shortening in half. Uh, I think that it's going to be really razor thin, um, which makes for an exciting Ryder cup. And I'm going to give you the storybook ending of all storybook endings and say that Ricky Fowler will score the winning point just because that would be the best thing ever. So, Yeah, no, I I debated between Harmon, Fowler, and Homa because I think that traditionally the teams go, like, top-heavy. Like, we'll probably put mm-hmm. out, like, Xander first and Kent – or, like, whoever is, like, the best playing, we'll put out like, Xander, Kent Lyon, um, like, Scheffler and those guys. So I think picking, like, a mid-tier guy who might be in, like, the middle low pack of the rotation mm-hmm. is a good pick. I also – we'll have to roll back the taste, but I'm pretty sure you said that – when I said 15-13, you, you said I think it's going to be a lot closer and said 14 half and 13 and a half. Which is, Which like, is that's close. just not – Yeah, but you said, like, a lot closer. Well, what do you want well, – how, how else am I supposed to say a lot closer? 14-14 tie? Like I, I no, have, like, no, like, half no, point. Like it, no, if I said like seventeen half and ten half. Okay, no, I, I, said, I, I see oh, I think it's gonna be a lot closer yeah. than four. No, you're right, it's gonna be fourteen right. half, thirteen half. I said fifteen, thirteen, then like I don't know. It, it was just a funny thing in my head. I was just like, huh? Like yeah. Okay, so, you know what? I mean, yeah, close enough. Close yeah, enough. Just, it's gonna be close just, enough. We'll, we'll go with a, that. Just a friendly nap. Um. So yeah, those are our fun predictions. We'll see what the pairings are we'll find out on thursday uh ethan will be on site so if you have any questions ask him um hopefully ethan ethan's trying to get into the media room to ask zach johnson if the hat theory is correct yes. i actually told rick run good to ask him that um and he said maybe That'd be amazing. Potentially. maybe um, potentially. no it's a definite yes so, it should, yeah, um it shouldn't even be a, it should yeah. yeah it'll be a it'll be a fun Rest of the week for this week, you know, thir- I guess Thursday is the opening ceremony, so we'll find out the pairings and might be might be doing a little uh, instant reaction to the pairings on the first hole, is what I'm if hearing I can, potentially. If if we can work out uh, a cell service potential issue, then we'll make it happen. Well, you are media credentialed, so you have like the media credentialed Wi-Fi. <laughs> I'll I'll try my best to uh to find a location to do that. So. So yeah. yeah, um, you know, put it mark your calendar potential bunker to bunker on the first hole and from uh from the United States. So um that's all we got. Uh let's wrap this up and uh go team USA. <laughs> the most subtle go team USA, but yes, go team USA. Uh thank you everyone for listening and we look forward to uh more content next week.